Welcome everyone to chapter number three. As it says up here, this is applications of differentiation, right? And the main application that we're going to be doing, right, is that everyone in the real world loves to minimize or maximize things. We want to maximize profits or minimize costs. We want to minimize maybe spreads of disease or maximizing algorithm efficiency so much more. And so we want to know how can we use calculus, right, to come up with minimums and maximums. First, we're gonna do this kind of in the very mathematical sense. If we have like a graph or a function, can we find its minimums or maximums? And eventually we wanna to get to, well, real world problems, right? So this is gonna be the optimization section here. Um, and we're gonna kind of build up to this. Here's a problem maybe just to whet your appetite. Suppose that we have a fixed amount of metal, right? Someone says, okay, maybe you have uh, two square feet of metal or something like this, it's tin, and I wanna build a soup can. And the question becomes, what radius uh, and height should I choose in order to maximize the volume? So I have a fixed amount of surface area, right? A set amount of material, and I wanna know how can I fit the most inside of it, right? What is the maximum volume? I want to maximize volume in this case that the soup can can hold. And so I have a little Desmos applet here for us, and which I've already loaded. So let's go over here. And here I actually have the situation, and this has a lot of the math that we will get to, right? But you can see, so I have a little slider here for a fixed amount of area. So whether that be 4.5 maybe square feet, or you can kind of move this around. And you can see that this is now giving us different curves, right? Based on the radius of the cylindrical can, we can see that we get out different volumes, right? And so the radius will also determine the height of this thing. So here's a nice cylinder right here radius and height for our soup can. So if I have a specified area, let's say I have six as my specified area, the question is what is the best radius or what is the best height? And so if I go here and it looks like the best radius, right, because this is the radius along here, radius of the cylindrical can, it looks like the best radius is around 0 0.564, 0.564. And this seems to somehow maximize, right, this volume of the cylindrical can. You might also wonder what is the best height, right? So we have here is the best radius, and we can solve and actually get the best height. And okay, these numbers are pretty unimpressive, but if you look at the ratios between the height and that best radius, right, you see that in this case it happens to be four. And as you move this slider, as you change this areas here, in fact, I'll just hit play in this case, hit play. And you see you do all these different, radi all these different uh, areas, and you can see that the best radius and the best height, they're changing. But no matter what they are, when you take the ratios between these things, they always stay four, which is pretty remarkable. So this actually gives us some nice result, right? So it says, thus, the height should be always four times the radius. If you take the ratio between these things, right, it should be four. That's how you get the most volume for a fixed amount of area. Equivalently, right, the can should be maybe twice as high as it is across. That's how you would maximize the volume. All right, so there is kind of an optimization style question that we will be able to solve using calculus. Now, we'll also cover some other topics in chapter three, right, kind of along the way. We're gonna discuss how a function's derivative or second derivative impacts the shape of a graph. We're gonna be able to do pretty good uh, curve sketchings, right? So we're gonna be able to give it a curve, find a graph of it uh, by hand without a calculator or anything. We'll also bring up this, uh, another named theorem here, the mean value theorem, which will guarantee that the derivative takes on a specific value. We'll talk a little bit about Newton's method. And then finally, how do you go backwards? We're pretty good at calculating derivatives. Can you take anti-derivatives? And this will transition nicely into chapter all right, so that's chapter three in a nutshell. Get to it.